Our journey continues as we explore Germany's fairy tale route. This part of the road trip takes us away from the city's hustle and bustle and immerses us in the dramatic landscapes. And you've guessed it, even more castles. We will be adventuring in our home on wheels flora. This enables us to explore in a unique way. So part two of our journey starts here. We are at Berg Park Willems Hall. I think that's how you pronounce it, just outside of Cassel. And today we're going to see the largest hillside park in Europe. Europe. And what a lovely day for it. It is slightly fresh. The weather is definitely getting colder, but um, the sun's coming out. And it's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. And it could be quite a lengthy walk today. Um, we've stayed in this big old car park, very quiet last night. Good little spot. And now we're going to drive to the bottom of the hill there is something special at the top of the hill though that we've got to show you and possibly a couple of castles later on. Let's go see what we can find. We've arrived in the car park now. It's a lovely big car park, there's motorhome spaces if you've got a larger vehicle and I don't know, it's quite empty at the minute isn't it? Mm, we parked it's... in the sun to get solar so we're trying to think about these things. Anyway, sun's gone in now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get going. The Brothers Grimm have spent over 30 years in this city and this is where most of the fairy tales and folklore stories were compiled. In 1860 they quoted the Cassell years were the happiest times of our life. So just peeking in the distance, I've just glimpsed the Hercules statue. Yes, this yeah. is a beautiful park. That's really nice. Massive. Really nice. And I would compare it to something at home like a National Trust, but mm. like bigger than one I've ever been to. The main event, would you say, is a Hercules statue? Yeah, but you got to have the effort. you got to make the effort to get up to the top. Yeah, it looks quite challenging, but mm. we'll see what happens. Now to ascend the steps and go and see Hercules. Construction of the park began in 1696 and the statue was built between 1701 and 1717. There are 520 steps to the top and we felt each and every one of them. We have made it to the top of the highest hillside park in Europe. Just have a look at the view. Epic lunch pot? Definitely. In the summer, on a Wednesday and Sunday afternoon, there's a grand water feature display. There are also nighttime displays with epic illuminations too. Entrance to the park is free, but it does cost to ascend further into the Hercules statue. What did we almost do? We need the grime. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy messing around. Sitting about. I'm well, sorry, mate. We well, shouldn't have played up the other night. Don't back chat me. I've told you before. So we're making our way back to the van, and we were just discussing what a nice day we've had. Yes, we've had about four and a half hours leisurely walking through the park. It was a little bit tough to get up to the top. <laughs> not gonna lie, I was out of puff. And we might still be able to fit something in today, maybe by nightfall or sunset. Some a little bit spooky. <laughs> Let's go. We are now off to a necropolis tombstone site. It's basically where renowned artists create their tombstone during their lifetime. And you can go and walk around there for three. It's very close to Cassell, out in the sticks a little, and it's just off a national park, and there's also a blue lake. So let's go see what that's all about. 
and see if it's a little bit spooky. This excursion isn't part of the set fairy tale route, but due to its proximity and our curiosity, we thought we'd pay it a visit. Entrance to the park is free, and it is also set in a beautiful national park. We are on the hunt for a camp spot which will enable us to walk into Cassell city centre the following day. So we've just arrived at what will be our stopover for the night, probably. It's one of the less glamorous ones we've had. Mm. We're just in a good position ready for tomorrow. Um, I think I could probably sleep for a week. Good morning! Despite the proximity to the road, we both slept quite well actually. I think that's probably due to the amount of walking we did yesterday. We were very, very tired. As you can see, it's a little <sighs> bit of a cold one this morning, but with the heater on, it's not too bad in here. So, uh, the next part of the fairy tale route, as always, is to do last night's dishes. So this park is definitely one of the more beautiful that we've visited so far. It's very grand, very long, straight roads uh, lined by trees either side. The orangery behind us it used to be a bathhouse back in the day. It was built in 1703 to 1711 and it's on the edge of Kalsaya Park, which we've just walked through. It took us around 20 minutes to reach the city centre. Here in Cassell, the Grimm brothers became librarians for the King of Westphalia, Jerome Bonaparte. The Grimwelt Museum celebrates the life and achievements of the brothers. Cassell was very pleasant, but it's time to move on. Ow, and we are moving on to... Badwell Dungeon. Yeah, what are we gonna see there? That is where Snow White was envisaged. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have a walk around some spooky beach woodland, and also maybe find a lakeside car park spot for tonight, if you're lucky. Ooh, yep, yeah, looking forward to it. So, as always, it's time to hit the road. We are now at a castle that a king built and Snow White was described as <coughs> his daughter was imagined to be Snow White because she died <laughs> <laughs> and was thought to have been poisoned. The father also opened up the tin mines around here as well so that's where they think the story kind of like began. <laughs> <laughs> After Meg's hiccuping fit, we made our way into the castle grounds. We circled the perimeter and admired the sculptures. So that was a nice little look at the castle, but it's probably as close as we're going to get. So it's time to move on and we are heading to a beechwood forest, which by the time we get there, which will be sunset, might look a little bit spooky. Ooh, and it's not far away, is it? No. So I might not film any of the drive.
Okay, so we've just parked the van and it's all a bit of a rush because as you might be able to tell, the light is swiftly dying around us and we've got a little bit of a walk until we make it there, uh, providing we go the right way. Do you know which way that is, Megan? No. We might have messed this one up. <laughs> I don't want to miss that light. <laughs> I love the relaxing fairy tale route. <laughs> We made it just in time, and the dying light provided an enchanting atmosphere. The woodland is a part of the Callowold Edessey National Park. What's that noise, cow? We thought the sound was just spooky wind chimes. So that was a bit of a mad rush, but we kind of made it. Would you say? Yeah, just in time for the light. If we had uh, come here with a picnic on a lunchtime, we could have done a seven kilometre trek through the National Park, but we got here at half past <laughs> six on a Friday night and oh, yeah. it's starting to get a bit chilly, isn't it? Yeah, so we chose to take the one kilometre dash. Uh, it was quite exciting, wasn't it? Mm. Night is drawing in and we've got to find somewhere to sleep. Hopefully it's going to be a smasher. <laughs> But don't get too excited because we don't know because that's the <laughs> game, isn't it? It's the game. Yeah. If we end up in a sports car park, then it won't be a smasher. But hopefully we'll be in surrounded by nature. And a lake. All I know is that we both want an early night. Join us next time to find out if our lakeside camp spot was a smasher. Subscribe to see our third and final instalment of the fairy tale route. <laughs>